Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brousseau. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a doggone show about weirdos. I am John Fahey, a.k.a. John Boy. Ooh. <laughs> oh. My name is Aaron Pita, a.k.a. Hypervert, Hypervert. high-functioning pervert, professor at law, Aaron Esquire. Pita. Yeah. I'm Matt Brousseau, and I'm a doctor. You are a doctor. Thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You fellows look beautiful. You too. Thank you, John. You look wonderful today. You got a haircut. Yeah, look, look pretty good. Clean, yeah, pretty good. nice. Clean boy. It's pretty nice. Um, I was uh, I was thrown together uh, last minute shit for the episode, and I um, I reached out to the Patreon subscribers. Patreon. <laughs> and I said to them, uh, "We recently just reached 100." Thank you, Hell folks. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to my aunt Shout Beatrice. Out to Pita. Beatrice Pita. Shout out to my brother. Yes, Matt's brother just subscribed. Aaron's aunt so just subscribed, <laughs> but also 98 other people yes, that are not related to us. <laughs> yes. 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 If we go far back enough in our genealogy, we are all related. It's been really fucking cool though, because like, like you since. You know, everybody gives up their mailing address so we can send them the stickers and the pins and everything. It's mm-hmm. cool to see how, like, the last batch, um, like, was all, like, in the same town, like, in New Zealand. It was, like, like a little flock effect. Like, somebody told their friends uh, or, like, yes. people were listening to get together at work. The tipping point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my friend uh, John uh, from London was just through here. He listens to it with uh, Fran and uh, a bunch of people at their work, and they were, like, they were like, sometimes, you know, we got to turn it off because we got, like, the blenders going because they work in the food industry. And, like, and sometimes it's not super work appropriate. Right. Sometimes we got to turn it off because we work in the food industry. <laughs> Can't but, talk about drinking piss as you're making a smoothie. But so I, I reached out to the um, Patreon subscribers and I said, we're recording in an hour. Does anybody have any uh, questions? That's great. Yes. And um, so we have... Uh, Oh, this fucking thing. Yeah, my bad. Uh, so, uh, Tagina. What? Yeah. That's, I don't know how you say that. Tagina? Tagina? Actually, it's Gina. Uh, well, t- t- she says, when are you live streaming at the Teak? I don't care if it's only 10 minutes long. Five minutes of you psyching yourselves up to enter. Three minutes or so of sheer awkward <laughs> horror. And then everyone noping the fuck out of the whole situation. Mo- I, moping or noping? Noping. Uh, just being like, let's okay, get out of okay. here. Yeah. Uh, I need it, and I know I'm not the only weirdo who does. That's uh, that's a great question. I think we could do that. Tajina. Yeah, I think so. Tajina. We're yes. doing. It's not. It's not even for us anymore. It's for for everybody. Yeah. This is. We we have a, a. We bear a a big responsibility upon our shoulders, and I think we owe it to our fans to do some sort of live, at least an audio stream mm. live. I, I don't know. Maybe if we wear some sort of hidden GoPro. Yeah. Uh, waterproof or <laughs> right. Nut load proof. Mm. Of course. Yes. Yes. Um, I'd be down to do it. Uh. I, fair warning, it's gonna be weird. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, also we we are uh, we have broken seven hundred dollars a month, so we will oh, be um, uh, putting together our 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 live something our video of, yeah. of uh, oh boy the um, teak reviews mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. Uh, what is it called Yelp Yelp the large company Yelp yes the gigantic <laughs> company Yelp yeah um, so we're gonna be making basically a video out of that yeah um, which I'm very very excited about. Uh, Ian McClendon, true Ian. true freak at the Teak. Oh. Ah, yes, High thank you. quality oh. patron, Ian, we love you. Um, he says, what's the possibility of getting more t- movie slash TV reviews a la Connections and Bill and Ted episodes? Ooh. Hell yeah. That dude. is something that we do on the Patreon. We, we do a lot of stuff. We talk about shit we like more um, as far as like movies and TV, yeah. etc. And nerd out about it. Super hardcore. So if you subscribe on Patreon, yeah. you will hear more of that. And there is Definitely going to be a lot more of that oh, hell because yeah. we can never shut the fuck up about that sort of shit. Yeah. So the answer to that question, Ian, is uh, a lot, a lot. And when and can you soon-ish. expect it soon? Yes. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of. Um, is I play James, on. Is James Burke the uh, John, connections? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of his stuff on YouTube right now. Oh, that man does work. Yeah, he does some real good stuff. I'm planning on doing uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow for an Ooh. episode. Oh yes. Um, 
And there's there's a lot. I was just gonna nerd out for one about uh, my favorite VHS cover art mm. um, for a <laughs> horror movie. It's mainly about the cover art, also about the movie. But the cover art is so breathtaking mm. that I could talk about that for about 15 minutes. Have I sent you the the Instagram? I think it's called Retro Release Video or something, and it's it's just VHS cover art of both movies that don't exist and new movies. Really, and they make it all look. So Super fucking retro. Really? So like they'll do Drive or they'll do, uh, I don't know, anything. In Blade Runner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2049. Oh, I get it. Ooh. Uh, all right. Um, they'll do like Juno, but it's all 1988. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> it's really, really cool. I'll send it. That I'll, is I'll, really I'll cool. I'll post it on our Instagram. Also, um, uh, if, speaking of Bill and Ted, uh, the Criterion Collection. Yes. The Criterion Collection is doing a double feature. Of the Seventh Seal, Ingmar Bergman's Seventh Seal. Yeah. Our buddy Joe Latchett sent us the heads Shout up on that. Shout out to you, you angel, man, mm -hmm. God. But what a brilliant idea. It's so good. And, and it's so funny because there's no Criterion Collection release of the original Bill and Ted. But no. there is one yeah. paired with Seven Seal yes. of Bogus Journey. Yes, because it's clearly superior. And and really gives you a lot of... Yes, I mean, that it gives me the credit I deserve, <laughs> you, you do. You you really... Thank you. You got backed up hardcore. <sighs> Maybe God. the episode, uh, the Patreon uh, episode you, led to that. Some dude at Filmstruck and Criterion was like, by Jove, he was right. <laughs> Death And plank? I enjoy drinking piss. And I'm not, <laughs> oh, that was too much. I'm a friend. But we should and, and, still do this idea. Enjoy the motion picture. <laughs> Is death playing a man in chess for his soul? Yes. Uh, Binko Care Harris says, asks, what sort of lubricant does Matt use on his throat every morning to make it so suave and smooth? <laughs> uh, well, it's a, it's a combination of water-based lube and... Uh, <clears throat> Well, chops more of a nighttime thing, Aaron. Okay, <laughs> well, you've, got a, you've thing. got a regimen. You got a you got a day treatment and a and a night. I treatment. am a doctor. That's that's how I do these things. Like a doctor does them. <laughs> At night, I use a chop bomb <laughs> with little to no alcohol. I was it was uh, at a, a crazy party scenario with these dudes that had a whole bunch of K and a whole bunch of Coke, which is all white powder. And so they would white just, powder. They would they would, <laughs> they would just say to each other. Daytime or nighttime? <laughs> Do you want daytime or nighttime? And they'd be like, daytime? Daytime? Here you go, dude. Oh, shit, that was nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, so uh, the answer is uh, Astroglide, right? Oh, yeah, yeah that's, yeah. The, that's the best stuff. You know, Astroglide, this is actually... Made by Dennis Paradise. Yeah, Dennis Paradise is a marketing guru behind Astroglide. Astroglide actually did an advertising campaign for Astroglide is my, like... Senior as a kid, as a college as a, student, oh, okay. for my marketing uh, degree. I thought you were a child actor. And Astroglide is called Astroglide because it was developed as a lubricant by I want to say JPL. Really? Yes. It was. It was initially used to be a lubricant design for parts in that would be used in outer space. Hence the name Astroglide. No shit. Yes. And uh, JPL being Jet Propulsion Lab, Jack Parsons, who probably could have used some Master Glide during his Maybe time. Maybe he know did. Sam, he might have. And uh, get those tablets going. Right. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. These, these tablets aren't going to nut on themselves. <laughs> right. Ooh, I wish I could invent a, some sort of machine like a rocket that would eventually need a lubricant that I could use to jerk off uh -huh. on these tablets right. and turn a boat around. Yeah. Turn He's like, you know, this rocket will get to space faster if it's covered in Astro Glide. <laughs> He's not wrong. And smoother. Yeah. With less aggravation. Yeah. So much less non irritant. <laughs> Bacteriostatic. He's using the Astro Glide on. Some poor redhead and going, this is going to take us to the moon. Ooh, boy. <laughs> Astroglide. Space. Very, good. very good. Zach Kowalski says, any chance for a live tour? Mm. Would love to see you guys come to Seattle. Get some Pacific Northwest piss and try it out. Yes. Let's put that number one on our stop. We will. We will. Seattle. And we definitely would go on tour. Hell yeah. As soon as, you know, just... Guys, tell your friends. Get them to subscribe to the Patreon. Yeah. If we have, if we get enough dough, we'll yeah. fucking come. If we get, let's let's put a number on it. Oh. I'm gonna say it right now. <laughs> okay. Sure. Fifteen hundred subscribers. Huh? 
I mean, what, $1,500 a month? Is that what I meant? Ooh, I Dude, you're choosing your own adventure yeah, here, bro. Yeah, that's what, that's what <laughs> Shit, fuck. What are they I mean, saying? Olympia How, beer We have, a, we have is, a, 100 subscribers now. We have 100 subscribers, $700. Let's get 200 subscribers. Okay. And we'll go on a tour. Yes. To a number of cities. Yes. I like that. All right. In the United States. Oh, Absolutely. in the United States. I love even, it. Maybe even Canada. Canada, too. Maybe wow. even Canada. We maybe. do have, we have some friends in Canada. If you're in New Zealand... Fly us out. We'll come. We'll do whatever you want. <laughs> um, uh, this gentleman, uh, Gorlak, says... Gorlak! That's a good name. Have you guys ever thought about doing an episode on Cope and Marsh's Bone Wars? May not be enough chop in it, but very interesting. Bone Wars? Bone Wars. These are the guys uh, excavating uh, dinosaur bones, and they were like, Seriously horrible to each other. I'm reading in, about that right now. Are you really in that book? In the book, brief, brief history, nearly everything. Dude, day. they would like fucking destroy prehistoric bones just to fuck each other over. Yeah, horrible. Yeah, but fascinating. Yeah, and they both were broke at the end of it. Yeah, spoiler alert. Everyone's broke <laughs> at yeah. the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Bones. I spent all my days on bones. <laughs> Could have been making love to my wife. Compromise. <laughs> I wanted men it caught. I settled for grilled cheese and a radiator. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> I, can't, I jerked off into a sock. Yeah, I wanted to have sex with a woman. I jerked off into a sock. <laughs> Mike Stanton, our friend, says, How do you all remain so sexy on the pod while obvious... These are real questions. Wow. I'm not making this oh, up. This is a good PR question. How do you all remain so sexy on the pod while obviously consuming large quantities of piss? Uh -huh. Great question. Good question. Hold on. Is Matt <laughs> human and can he read me bedtime stories? <laughs> I know John is beautiful, uh -huh. but can he be any sweeter? <laughs> Is PETA as delightful as he sounds? <laughs> Mike Stanton. Wow. I know. Let's answer those questions. One. Um, what was the first question? Can you read him bedtime stories? Sure. If yes. We're going tour, yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, if we're going up to Seattle, we'll swing by Mike in Idaho anyway. Oh, perfect. Great. Beautiful. That's how Mike, Mike that's where, how where's, where in Idaho is Mike? Mike I met at, uh, before, I think, the show. Maybe the show had already started. But um, Mike was, uh, he flew in for an Unpops uh -huh. backyard stand up show. Love and it. And that's where I met Is him. Is he in uh, Boise? I could have I can't remember if he's Is in there a... any other place there? There's Boise. Idaho Falls. Oh, oh right. Idaho yes, Falls. that's true. Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene's beautiful. Yeah. Boise is the fastest growing Ruby city Ridge. in the country. <laughs> well, Boise. I would want to stop secret. there. Is, is that true? Shh. Fastest growing city in the country. Shut up. Yeah, be careful. Why? Dude, uh, because it's great. Oh, well, all right. That settles that. There's, that's it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you Maybe read it's cheap or I don't. I, well, I think great. that's part of the great equation. It it's is cheap. Yeah. It's nice. The people are good. Not a lot of uh, Vegas was number one before the housing bubble broke. You know, well, that's a terrible idea. That yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it was strange to me too. Fuck like, Vegas, oh. unless you're from there. You're yeah, great. that's just that's just foreigners buying houses they're not living in. Uh, and he no, closes with Angeles. saying, "But mostly, <laughs> also Los Angeles. Have y'all looked into that press your luck scandal because it is dope? Big bucks, no whammies. Stop. Yes, we have. Oh, yes, that's a good one. And uh, we will be talking about it on the program. Yeah. Um, but our friend that was on. Um, Stephen Parks was on the Patreon episode. Yes, super he brought us the Cocaine Bear T-shirts. Mm. I've wonderful, had multiple people ask for those shirts, um, so we're gonna have to get some. And, and, and we're gonna have to uh, double deal on those. Yeah, shirts. Yeah, we're gonna have to double deal those shirts because they are one, so cool. Yes, comfy, to, comfy. They yeah. fit well. They are a conversation star. Everybody always asks me about it, and believe me, has no problem talking about it. Two right. of my favorite things, nature and chop. Yes. Yeah. Shirts. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love shirts, too. Uh -huh. Big shirt fan. Yeah, it is gorgeous. It's, Thank you again, Stephen, for those you. shirts. And we'll be, we'll be selling those somehow, somewhere. Uh, Stephen says, can you guys react to this video? <laughs> <laughs> it is disgusting. Uh -huh. And okay. hilarious, and it's a Pornhub yeah. link. Oh, which I was gonna look at, <laughs> but I didn't. Oh, okay. great, that's, that's really... good. Very good. Um, Very good. Good timing, John. So should I uh, plug it in? Plug it in. Oh, or should we? Uh, should we wait on that until I know, later I, in the episode? Or? Uh, I think just hold it up to the mic. For I mean, this is live. Yeah, this you're gonna is, have this to. This is real shit right now. Oh, okay, I, I didn't arm any. Amateur uh, drunk girl drinks guys piss. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Is uh, the thing. Um, you know, it's it's te it's not porn, is it? I mean, well, I guess porn is anything. Uh, you know it when you see it. That's you, know the, you do know when you see it. And we there know is nothing this is not it. Yes, this is just... This, this is, is just a couple of friends hanging out. Enjoying, yeah, yeah. Enjoying a... a, a 
I was gonna say frosty, it's not, but it's more frosty. There's nothing inherently sexual about no. it, unless How about drinking, unless uh, you're masturbating while it's happening. Am, she's an amateur drunk girl. Oh, well, she's not. She's oh, not. She's okay. not very no, 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 good no, no, at being no, drunk. She's amateur drunk, drunk professional yeah. drunk. It's at a different level there. Let's see what's going on here. That's the ad. You can this skip. This is the ad. It'll be skipped in two seconds because mm-hmm. sh- this girl wants us to play with her for some reason. Hmm. Turn aside. For, for some reason. Oh. oh God, she's. A, no. This is where they turn no. it down at work. No. no. Hold on one second. Uh oh. What? Oh, it's gonna take me a second. Uh, he's he's pee shy. No, no, the valves are switching. Uh, yeah, this girl's like leaning down. This guy's got his wiener in the shot. Yeah, she's like in a parking lot or something. And um, he's got some stage fright. I'm ready. I mean, it's his camera, uh, right? She's got yeah. a tongue out. And... Not too much on me. Fair, she's saying fair. it all weird and. Not too much. O- How can it not be too much on you? It's piss. Well, John. You know, everybody has different well, levels. She is on some kind of drug. This can't be. This is. You think this is fake? No, no, no. no this, this is, is all fake. too real. <laughs> <laughs> this is, oh, it's like a very bright. Right. Oh, here he goes. There. Well, as long no. as they're both healthy. Oh, and, and now it's in her mouth. And having fun. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, I don't know how I feel. Uh. Steven Parks? It's a wide world out there. It is. You well, know? The wide world of water sports, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You're. Oh, no more. I don't even see any urine. Uh, yeah, there was. Oh, wait, wait, watch out for me. Watch out for me. Watch out for me. Oh, come on. Friendly fire, dude. He wants to pee a little bit. Oh, he wants oh, to pee. Oh, here comes this other dude. Oh, another oh, guy. And she's like, no. She's like, get oh, out of here. That's no you good. Know. Guys, gals, make sure you ask if someone really wants to be peed what? on. Oh, my what? God. God damn it. <laughs> oh, good for her. Good for her. Get out of there. She's <laughs> God damn it. Watch out for me. Watch out for me. It's always the. Oh, oh no. He's peeing on her. I need a towel. This is this is uh, debaucherous. Oh. This is really bad. Oh no, no, everybody's peeing. Every, oh, Not everyone's oh, peeing. Oh boy, this is really there bad. There you stuff. go. This is on. Steven, this is really bad. This is really gross, dude. You owe us so now many shirts, Now it's dude. just two dudes steady. Yeah, this is a completely on a different video butt. now. Now it's just guys peeing. We've seen. There, I've we're, seen that. We're just seeing guys' dicks, Steven. <laughs> Give her a towel. Well. I'm, oh, not God, I'm not done. Oh no, she she's she's very. He's plugging her nose. Oh God, this is bad. Come on, this is bad. This... <laughs> Steven, you have to send us so many fucking shirts. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh now they're kissing. Now they're kissing. She has so much pee in her mouth. Now they're kissing. Oh, they're so they're laughing like they are. All like... right, all right. That's a good ending. That's the ending I was hoping for. I... Oh, now he's still peeing. Uh, you know, you just can't turn it, just, it off. You know? He's telling her it's rain. I had to pee. Yeah, that's home videos for you. Well, it's uh, amateur. This is not a. It's pro. not professional, certainly. You know, it's over another two minutes. Yeah, but it, Jesus it, Christ. In general, in general, I'm skeptical of the notion of a oppressive patriarchy, but. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean in general? <laughs> in general, you're opposed to it. In general, in general, I'm skeptical. Oh, you know, okay, you're skeptical. But I mean, I acknowledge it. I acknowledge it, but it's not. I don't think it's pervasive. But after seeing, <laughs> you don't think it's massively it's pervasive. What? After seeing this video, I'm pretty well convinced. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. We're two happy endings thank you, here. Thank you. Yeah. After I'll be convinced, video. Darren, of the patriarchy <laughs> through the this... three minute piss video. <laughs> <laughs> it takes it takes different, you know, different strokes, Jen. It does. It does. Uh, um. We. <laughs> it's gonna need. We need to shake that off with. I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a need quick to drink. Drink my own piss. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, nice. Speaking of Seattle, Olympia beer. That's uh, that's an all right piss beer. You know. Yeah. That is. Uh, that is. I there? love regional piss. Mm, yes. Uh, 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 like a hams. Mm. Hams is a a you, good regional. You can piss. taste the the Genesee. Oh Genesee, Jesus. Oh the the cream ale. Cream ale. Oof. Very good Cream stuff. Cream ale piss? Cream ale piss. Excuse me, sign me up. <laughs> oh, Aaron. <laughs> I like when you can taste the air or the grass in the piss. Right. Oh, yeah. I like when you can taste the gravity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that's my favorite. I wonder what Stephen Hawking has to say about that. Um, so I, I think I, I do owe Mike a little uh, whammies. 
Yeah, the pressure lock. The pressure lock. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's I think that's probably a mini episode. Yeah, unless the guy's got some weird shit in his closet, but it's a very very interesting story. No, it's 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 great. I mean, it's 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 great. It's it's just I don't know how I'm doing it. It's it's such a it's such a actually not that brilliant hack. You well, know what I mean? People were dumb. The shows were dumb. Mm-hmm. It's easy to fuck with them. People were dumb. Like, but I mean, it was really a guy, just a r- very regular. I mean, he was an eccentric, of course. Yes. Perfectly eccentric, but he was just studying the program yeah. and was just kind of going, huh? You know, the pattern goes like this, and it blinks on this, and then it blinks on this. Oh, and this time it went this way. Oh, and this time it went that way from before. And then just like, I know which numbers light up with what prizes. Yeah, why is it a scandal when you just see what they're doing? It, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like counting cards yeah. at, 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 in Vegas. It's yeah. like, what, what, what well, am I supposed to do? Yeah. Right, I'm right. I'm playing by the rules that you set up. You don't like when I'm winning? Get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand how counting cards is, is wrong. And, mm-hmm. and, like, you know, the accusations of cheating um, that happened, like, afterwards were like, well, I mean, I guess you could call that cheating, but maybe you could also call it watching your show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm your biggest fan, Pressure yeah. Luck. Yeah. So, like, I and mean. And Pressure Luck goes to, I mean, their, those, their ratings went through, the, like, it was super popular mm-hmm. at the time. Yeah, he made them a shit ton of money. Yes. Yeah. And it's. Well, it's they been... pay him 1500 bucks. <laughs> and it was like, it was like, you know, kind of the most popular one in syndication after that. Yeah. You know, like, it was yeah. like, it was shown and repeated millions and millions of times. It had a to be continued on a game show. Oh, my God. It was a two part episode because yeah. he never stopped winning. And the same thing with, um, Quiz show, mm-hmm. uh, yes, and Jeopardy did that when they had Ken Jennings win for like fucking a year. Yeah, people love that. Yeah, it's 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 exciting. It's I mean, pe- people will, will come back to Jeopardy if they hear somebody has not stopped winning. Yes, you know, I'll do it. Um, but Matt, I want to hear a little bit about. <laughs> oh yes, your... Matt, do you have any videos of people uh, begrudgingly consuming bodily fluids? Oh yes, yeah, so that's us? all at home. Those are all VHSs. Oh. Okay. <laughs> We get some cool cover art. The John. land after time. <laughs> <laughs> the land after time. Uh, oh, a brief history of the land <laughs> the after brief time. Brief history of yeah. piss. Yeah. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so so last week we talked about a, an old school wrestler who spot Nick with Laura, and uh, I was going to do another wrestler, but we didn't. Uh, we ran out of time because it was a great episode. It was. And uh, I was going to talk about one of my favorite. Wrestlers. This is a character I, I I found from this Frank DeFord. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's an amazing uh, sports writer, American sports writer, one of the best. And he had this article a few like uh, 10, 20 years ago about her, and I, I read it I don't know, a couple years ago, and then I forgot about her. And then Laura's uh, episode brought it back, and uh, and so I want to talk about someone who is the greatest female wrestler of all time. China. <laughs> Not quite. Okay. Her name uh, began as Mildred Bliss. Mm. She was born 1915 in Coffeyville, Kansas. Mm-hmm. Coffeyville, Kansas, then was the at the height of a burgeoning glass and concrete or some shit boom. <laughs> <laughs> There's some shit boom coming. <laughs> you gonna want to be in on the ground floor? <laughs> well, there wasn't a goddamn thing for her out in Coffeyville. She left school at 15. She worked some odd jobs here and there, support her and her mother. Did the coffee have anything to do with it? It was a guy him? named Coffee okay. who named it after himself. Yeah. It was originally as like 1859 or something. It was founded on a border of Indian land. And it was a hot trading post because it's right at the border of uh, Indian territory. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, technically, this is all Indian territory. Right. But where the territory was then. Yeah. Uh, and then you saw so white folks could go over and trade and then come back. Right. And uh, but when she was born there, there really really wasn't uh, anything for a, a young woman. Uh, at fifteen, she dropped out of school. Uh, her father was uh, some sort of inventor who ran away from the family after a while, mm-hmm. as they do. And uh, she said her only highlight back then was uh, she would uh, she worked as a waitress at a Zuni Indian reservation near Gallup, New Mexico. And she would sneak off to the Zuni war dances. And one time she fell off a horse and was knocked unconscious. Those were her highlights of her childhood. Huh. Hmm. You know, you remember the falling off the horse part. Or yeah. maybe you forget it. Or maybe you forget it. Strange thing to conclude in your bio. Oh, and once I <laughs> fell off a horse, I was knocked unconscious. <laughs> you know, stories are stories, Judd. Yeah. Maybe it drastically uh, altered her personality, and that's why it's notable. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Because I bet she's a bit of a weirdo. Uh, yeah. She's got uh, her moments, but... Uh, uh, Mildred? <laughs> Mildred Bliss, as she was born. But uh, her, her, one of her ex-boyfriends, she was working in this, uh, near Gallup at this, to- at this point at 15 as a waitress to make money for her and her mom. And uh, her ex-boyfriend showed up. He was on his way to California, and he's like, yeah, let's go to California. And she's like, oh, anything to get out of here. So uh, they went to California, and uh, as Woody Guthrie says, if you ain't got the do re mi, then you got to get the fuck out. And nothing worked for him. And so they both went back to Kansas and uh, moved to Kansas City, and her mom started a cafe called Mom's Cafe. Hmm. And it was on Truce Street. I don't know anything else about it. Truce Street. <laughs> Truth? Truce. T-R-O-O-S-T. It's still there, Aaron. Oh. Check oh, it out. Truce. For the, for the, uh, the Profiles Next Intricity walking tour. <laughs> <laughs> You'll want to go to track three on your cassette. Stop by mom's. <laughs> And in 1932, she was about 17 at this point, uh, he took her to a wrestling match in the old Midway Arena. There's a famous arena out there in Kansas. And uh, there's about 1,500 people in there. And, uh, you know, back then, wrestling had started out as kind of your your standard Greco-Roman morphing into... Covered in astroglide. Yes. Smooth men. Mm. Uh <laughs> <laughs> And sitting there amongst this crowd, Mildred remembered that she had a recurring dream as a kid. And the dream was that, uh, this is what she said, she said, I'd be at the top of the steps and there'd be a crowd of people applauding me at the bottom. And then I'd take off like an angel. And she remembered this dream she had while she was there and something clicked in her. And she said, holy shit, I, I want to wrestle. I want to try that. Hmm. And uh, not shortly after, she was about seven months pregnant when her boyfriend left. Oh, yikes. Oh, and that's when she decided to start wrestling? That's when she decided... I gotta get this kid out of here so I can start <laughs> wrestling all these guys. That's basically what happened. She was walking down the street, and uh, she sees this man named Billy Wolf. <clears throat> At the time, Billy Wolf was the middleweight wrestling champion of Missouri. Mm. He was famous statewide. Maybe nationally or to some level. But uh, not a pretty man. This is how Frank DeFord, in his article, describes Billy Wolf. He writes, He was 20 years older than Millie twice her age, and she found him nearly repulsive. Nearly. Nearly. Gnarled, blocky, with cauliflower ears, sinister eyes behind his horn-rimmed glasses, with a cigar stuck in his stubby, gap-toothed mouth that brought to mind a jack-o'-lantern. Oh. But she kept bothering him. She would go to him. Every time she saw him, she'd go, hey, I want to wrestle. And he'd go, fucking get away from me, kid. Mm -hmm. Knock it off, kid. Girl, you're pregnant. And so she had she had her kid, and she kept going bothering him now and bothering him. And he said, "He said you you ain't bigger than a pint of piss." That's what oh, he said. Oh. You can't wrestle. You ain't bigger than a pint of piss. A pint of piss. That sounds good. It's not big though. You can't. You know. Rest, no, 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 you know? no. It's just a pint. Mighty though. Hmm. I need a towel. <laughs> God, I can't get that out of my head. Right <laughs> Watch out for me. <laughs> oh, well, here I come. <laughs> So eventually she bothers him enough where, where he goes, fine, all right, fuck it, I'll throw you, he, he, you know, she was about, her whole life she's about, you know, she, at this point she's about 5'2". She was never more than 130 pounds, fine. really. Fine. And at this time she was about 115 pounds, 5'2". And uh, so Wolf, he, in his uh, brilliance, he says he finds some local gypsy kid, as it was called, as, as I read. <laughs> I, I mean, anyway. the Roma, the Romani. <laughs> hey, you, gypsy kid, come here. Come, come, here. come hang out with this pint of piss broad. And Wolf, Wolf uh, this guy, this kid was 160 pounds. He's a head taller That's than That's about 1.25 pints of piss. <laughs> pints of piss. Yeah. Yeah. And he, gave, he said, I'll, I'll give you a dollar every time you pin her, and I'll give you an extra dollar if you hurt her. Jesus Christ. Good God. You guys are really convincing me of this patriarchy stuff. <laughs> yeah, <huh? laughs> So she says uh, the, the the match starts out, this kid runs over to her, just picks her up and starts spinning her around his head, and he goes to take her to throw her to the ground, and as he does this, she spins out, lands on her feet, and rolls him over and pins him. Hell yeah. And Billy Wolf is like, nah, it's fucking garbage. Well, do it again. She does it again. And she, and she pins him twice, and Billy Wolf goes, aha. I can make some money off this lady. Mm-hmm. And he has this idea. And he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you around every town and you're going to wrestle men. Mm-hmm. And he says, all I need is some money and we can do this. Oh, boy. And so she goes to her mom. She says, mom, uh, I need some money. And her mom goes, all right, well, I'll sell the cafe. Oh, I'll, God. I'll give you a share. Because some strange man wants me to go roll around on mats with men? It's a different time. 
I mean, it she never probably pinned her fucking mother. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me. Oh, how women control the world? <laughs> <laughs> from the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from the cauldron of the cauldron of piss. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the 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 um the brazenness of of. I mean, oh yeah, people, people starting out, yeah, people and, starting and, out, and, and especially women in these situations. I'm like, are you out of your goddamn mind? Like, I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't want to do that. I no. don't want to give some guy some money to, you know, like more, more importantly, I don't want her to go on the road with a man. Y- yes, yes, to get into trouble with other men, right? <laughs> with her mom's she, money, she's paying to do it. Yeah, it just sounds like a bad deal. It sure does. But you know, big but risk, it ends risk with, reward uh, type of thing. How many, how many <laughs> half pints of piss around the world? You know, did that and, and failed. I don't probably yeah. a lot. Yeah. But well, well, so, so what? It's just so god damn. Well, what happens? Brave and stupid. Yeah. Is so her mom sells a cafe, but she doesn't take any of them her, her share. And uh, she gets in the car with Billy, and they're they're driving off, and Billy goes, "Hey, where's that money?" And she goes, "I didn't take it." So Billy starts yelling at her. He hits her. And then Jesus. at that moment, then she realized, oh, this is my relationship with this man now. But he would train her forever, basically. While hitting her. While hitting her. Did he? Wow. So he hits her and then goes, all right. You yeah. don't have the money, but I got to hit you. <laughs> it's an abusive relationship, basically. Right. Yeah. But she, so she took the lick so she didn't have to pay? No, no, no. She, I mean, she didn't owe him any money. He, he was just going to say, how much money did you get? And then take it. Right. Yeah, right, right, right. But he says, all right, fine. Here's how you can, you know, repay me. Here's what we'll do. We're going to go town to town. You're going to wrestle guys. We'll go to a carnival. Uh, $25 a match against any man near her height or weight and anybody who, or, or any woman and, and anybody who could pin her within 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Then they would get the money. Otherwise, Billy keeps that money. And is he a big fella? Is he two pints of Billy's piss? a big old boy. Okay. Billy's a huge man. All right. A huge, ugly, gnarled man. So it's not like he's hitting her and going, "All right, here's how to hit a man." No, <laughs> like she can fight back. No, he's okay. like, "You're mine." Right. And uh, fuck, fuck. So this is the '30s, right? This is the 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 late '30s. The Great Depression is is kicking, still in swing here, mm. uh, mid 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 to late '30s. And uh, so what mm. they do is you go to a carnival and you wrestle. That's where all the crowds are. Right. You wrestle at the carnivals, and uh, this is a this is a, another this is a thing another Frank DeFord thing I'm going to read because I can't put it better than him. He writes: Talkies were coming in, and the richer folks in town had radio sets, but there were still scores of carnivals amusing America then, tempting midways of naked light bulbs, Ferris wheels, hurdy gurdy music, candy apples and lemonade, games of skill for unskilled rubes, and freak shows. The fat women. Dwarfs, giants, the tattooed man, and the dog-faced boy. The top acts were what the carnies called concerts, which meant you could charge the hicks extra. Hermaphrodites, for example, were classic concerts. Wow. Classic. Bears that danced, another big one on the line. And the two-headed child was always good for another nickel, even if it turned out to be a barely formed fetus in a murky bottle. (laughs) But it was the internet. We just watched some girl get pissed on in a parking lot. We're not much better. No. There's no. a nickel worth of internet we spent. I know, yeah. man. And he writes, but caveat emptor. Carney were the bottom of the barrel, free white and 21 division. Most towns wouldn't even let the carnival employees off the premises. Drifters and scoundrels, tramps, runaways. It was a raw life on the move in a pinched time and everybody was fair game. And nobody was lower at the barrel than Mildred Bliss. Really? Female wrestler... At a carny show? Yeah. She was fair game. I mean, really? She's not, she's not even a bearded lady. Yeah, but if she's out there beating up dudes, it must have drew some hubbub. Oh, the crowds came out in fashion. Because if you're a poor hick, you're like, oh, what better way to make some money than thumping on a lady? <laughs> I do it at home all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's what I'm saying, though, is how was she so low on on the ladder if, if that, to me, would seem to be a... Uh, because no one believed she would win. She could do it. Yeah. Okay, right. Got it. They showed up. Uh, they, they, I think they called the, 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 the young carnival, like the people who showed, the young carnies were like the first of May because mm-hmm. they were the people who they came out at the beginning of the season who weren't, who weren't used to it yet. You know, and she was the greenest. You know, she'd never, she'd never worked carnivals before. She's too green. She's too green. And at this point, she, she got into these and she wrestled six nights a week for 50 weeks a year. 
Oh my God. And she didn't lose at a carnival for two years. Good Lord, man. Jesus. Sometimes she was making $2,000 a night, and this is in the Great Depression. What? $2,000 a night, but all the money went to Billy. <laughs> so, I, I'm, and I'm going to ask this, and I mean this in the most respectful, sympathetic way possible. Was this man raping this woman? No. He was just beating her. He was just beating her. Well, I'm sure it wasn't the most consensual sex. No, I don't. It, it didn't even seem like they ever had sex. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. But, well, that's, I guess, a bright, because, bright side. Because Billy's other thing was... You Raping spend, men. <laughs> no. The other thing was spending two thousand dollars a night on on hookers. <laughs> no hookers well, beer. what Billy would do is he would say, "I got the best female wrestler in town," and any time he met another woman who wanted to wrestle, he would he would ask her two things. He would say, uh, "Are you a lesbian?" And if you're not, will you sleep with me? And if a woman wanted to be yeah. to best Mildred Bliss, Can they I had to it? fuck Billy, and they had to beat her in a match. Yeah. Huh. And she knew that if she ever lost. That's it. He would kick her out, and he would take the next woman. The Good Joe, God. The Joe Jackson, Joe Jackson School of yeah. Management. And by now, he uh, Wolf had, a, had an idea. He said, Mildred Bliss, that's not a wrestling name. I'm going to call you, your name is Burke now. You're Mildred Burke. Hmm. I want to throw an Irish name on it for some reason. Yeah, Brawler. Yeah. Oh, Mildred. But so, I mean, Billy, he was basically the worst person. He sounds like a very bad person. Dude. There were times she didn't want to fight, he would hit her. One time she didn't want to fight some of him and his son beat her up. Oh, God! Where'd the son come from? Well, there's another Watch story Watch out for there. me! There's another story there. Comes the son. I'll, ta I'll talk about I'll touch on that later. Watch out for me. Watch out for the son. And it's the only time she, uh, in these early years, the only time she felt like running away was once when... Uh, Billy hit her kid. Oh, God, the kid's along for the ride? Of what course. happened was Billy was sleeping with a woman in their trailer. The kid started crying. He hit the kid. Oh. Mm -hmm. So Mildred runs in. She takes the kid. She runs off. She starts hitchhiking. And, of course, she gets picked up by some guy who then tries to rape her. And she <sighs> runs back to Billy, and she goes, she's like, this is all I got. He's, this man's not trying to rape me, at least. Right. Jesus Christ. And she wrestled in every state it was legal. New York wasn't legal at the time. She couldn't wrestle in New York. But she wrestled in every state in the United States where it was legal. She wrestled in Canada and Cuba and Mexico, even Japan. Was it legal in New York? No. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could, UFC was You could wasn't... stab a man to death, but not wrestle <laughs> you know, anybody to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, it involves money. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, we don't do that here. Get out of here with your I, carny I, nonsense. I think up until a few years ago... Uh, MMA was illegal in New York. Like you couldn't have UFC fights in New York State. Really? Yeah. Huh. It's interesting. It is. It is. It smells she... like piss. The state. But... <laughs> <laughs> she said, of all, out of all the places, Canada, United States, Cuba, Mexico, Japan. She said Mexico was the toughest. She said if they liked you, they wanted a piece of your clothing. If they didn't like you, they wanted a piece of your flesh. She would break her nose. She broke. Uh, she had five knee injuries. Each each thumb was ripped out of the joint and pushed all the way back to her wrist. What by just random? Just wrestling. And and pretty much exclusively people at carnivals who paid to wrestle her. People at carnivals, and then later, what would happen? Uh, she eventually she would leave Billy. Good. Now one time she uh, one time she was fighting a woman and. Uh, the woman stomped on her face, and all of her teeth had to be pulled out. Oh, God. I don't like this. Oh. And she said, Mildred said, oh. she said, I beat the living hell out of her. I was hurting so bad, I just went insane. Ooh. I like that. I like that better. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And most of the time, these were actually working fights, you know, in the beginning. All of these carny shows were, were, were real working fights. Not shooting matches. It was not shooting matches. These were real fights. And... It was around this time, it was about the early 40s, she had her first uh, bad knee injury. And so Billy said, uh, he, he was, in her, in her words, and I think there's a lot of sarcasm, she said he was, he was very kind. He said, all you have to do is just trace your, train your replacement. I'll, I'll, let, I'll keep you around if you can just train your replacement. Right. Uh -huh. And so Mildred was training some women, and during one of these training sessions, her knee popped back into place, and she just destroyed this woman, and she's like, oh, I'm back again. Mm -hmm. Wow. She was back on top, and nobody could stop her. And by now, she had started to remove Billy from the equation. She started writing letters to newspapers announcing her arrival huh. and offering money to anybody who could beat her. 
She uh, she went to Bethany, Missouri, and a dishwasher said he could beat her, and then he realized what he had gotten into, and he didn't want to, he was cowering in the kitchen, and the cops had to show up and drag him to the fight. Oh my God. And then what? he's... <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, well, it's, it's the law. It's the law, son. <laughs> you made a bet. It's the law. Where, where do you think you are, New York? <laughs> Get him. He's under the sink. You got to fight this woman like a man. <laughs> and uh, the she guy. doesn't have any teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the guy shows up at the ring and he says, I don't have any shorts. I can't wrestle her. So Mildred took her shorts off and she gave them to him. And then she mopped the floor with him. She mopped the floor with the dishwasher. Wow. That's she, good stuff. She would she would enter the ring to the saber dance. Are you familiar with the saber dance? Not at all. This is it. Uh, you are familiar with it. You just don't know it. Really? This is the saber dance. Yes. That's, that is? Really? That's the saber dance. No shit. So she would enter the ring to that. And it's pretty she, dope. She would be wearing a, a robe, a twenty-pound robe covered in jewels, and there's, she said that there was fifty thousand dollars worth of jewelry just covered in, just covered in that. <laughs> oh she walked, man, she must have looked so awesome. She didn't wear. She was married to Billy, but she didn't wear a wet, wedding ring. She wore on her ring finger. She wore a crown because she was the champ. Damn, yo, I think Billy was getting like. Dominated in the bedroom. You think so, huh? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I, like I think that's to, a terrible I, hypothesis. I, I like to think that he is. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll deal with that in the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll unpack that later. <laughs> so, Aaron, tell us what you're thinking. So, wow. she comes in and she's like, I ain't got no teeth, but <laughs> I'm going to gum you up. <laughs> Uh, eventually, she would rile the crowds up so much that she had to stop wearing the jewelry because they they would all try to storm the room and take take her jewelry. Uh, yeah. So they, they can't win the fight. At least take take her jewelry from her. Mm -hmm. She would face these like everywhere she went. She didn't know who she's going to face, and sometimes it'd just be it'd just be wild people. Uh, sometimes they would be other female wrestlers, the, lo the local hotshot female wrestler. Right. One time she faced this woman she that was called Crazy Gladys. Ooh, yikes. She didn't have a cauliflower ear. She had a cauliflower head. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and after each match, Crazy Gladys would eat a bar of soap to get the germs <laughs> out of her mouth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, oh. That's very, very nice. What do you mean? She, would she had a cauliflower face. <laughs> she would eat a bar of soap. <laughs> To get the germs? To get the germs out of her mouth. What is she doing with her mouth? Well, sometimes you get a finger in the mouth, you know? Mm. You're grappling. Is you're it, rolling around. But is it like in front of the crowd, too? No, no. It's she, not like a show thing? No, She's like, she, I'm a psycho. No, she was literally a, a crazy oh, person. It wasn't like... <laughs> no, it wasn't part of the act. It wasn't like Steve Stone Cold was, Steve Austin drinking no, two Budweiser's. No, it was no, like no, she, no. It was her in a closet <laughs> backstage <laughs> just jumping down a bar of soap. Gotta get this done. <laughs> Dove is a core of moisturizing Ooh. cream. Ooh, Irish Spring. Mm. Yeah, I used to love those commercials where they take the knife and cut the Irish Spring. Mm. Ah, yes, Irish Spring. <laughs> In uh, 1937, she would defeat Clara Mortensen for the Women's World title. The Women's World title had been on and off, going around, uh, generally officially, for about uh, 20, 20, 30 years before then. And wow. it was held by various people. It wasn't always held by someone. Sometimes they would they would lose it because they would die or something, and someone else would pick it up again. Eventually, Clara Morrison held it in 1937. Uh, Mildred Burke beat her, and Mildred Burke would then hold the title for 15 years after that. Wow. Uh, and she, uh, around that time, she went down to Birmingham to face Cora Jung Jurgens. So this is 40s? This is, about, this is 38, 39. This is 38, 39. 37, she wins the title. And she's in Birmingham, Alabama. And so she goes down now to Birmingham. This is, you know, she's just traveling everywhere. You're facing the best people in the town. And now she's doing like real matches, not carny shows. She's going to real venues, you know, like Midway and places like mm -hmm. that. And they're selling it out to watch this woman just dominate whoever shows up. But she faces the best local female wrestler, this woman named Cora Jurgens. And the match was completely rigged for Cora. Hmm. And so what what they did 
Mildred knew this, and Billy knew this, and Billy took a quite a beating from some uh, some local toughs mm. over his challenging of this. But they came to an agreement with Cora and and her reps. They said, "What we're going to do? We're going to do some work. We're going to uh, 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 we're going to do some uh, we're going to let you win some of these matches." Mm-hmm. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make a bunch of money going around the state, letting the local hero win. Mm-hmm. Uh, working matches are when they they fake it. Because you're working them. Because you're working them. And the shooting matches, are those are real. Right. Got it. Yes, yes, yes. So they would go around Birmingham, and uh, they would do working matches with Cora, and letting her win, and the crowd would get all happy. And But but Mildred wasn't happy with this. She still wanted to actually beat this woman. So they had an official shooting match, and again, it was rigged. The, and Mildred clearly beat her. The ref gave it to Cora, but the whole crowd, they could sense it was rigged. They stormed the ring and carried Mildred off as the winner. Wow. And then Mildred says, back in the dressing room, she says, Cora knew I was pissed. And she said, Cora cowered near the shower. So I went over to her, and right there with no spectators and no payment, I beat the living daylights out of her. (laughs) (laughs) And then she took her finger, and she waved it at the sobbing Juergens, and she said, who's the champion? And she waved it until Juergens said, you are, Millie, you are. Wow! Yikes, man! She the abuser, the abuser yeah. becoming the abuser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oof. How come there's no sh- soap in this shower? Where was this? <laughs> oh, like, this they're all ate it off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take a shower after Gladys. In 1938, she was in the she was in the first ever official mud wrestling oh, match. Yeah, all right. Oh boy! It was in Akron, Ohio. It was covered by Life magazine. If you if you Google Mildred Blur, Mildred Burke Life magazine, you can see photos of her covered in in mud. No shit. Yeah. Is uh, my Life magazine spread? At this point, she was making about fifty thousand dollars a year. That is very good. The average Major League Baseball player in thirty eight, thirty nine is making six thousand. Jesus. In uh, here's here's a here's a little uh, thing from nineteen thirty nine. She went down to McCallum, Texas. It was covered by the local paper. And they wrote, uh, this is October 17th, 1939. They wrote, it was a bang-up, good win-up of a splendid show all the way. A bang-up, good win-up of a splendid show all the way. That's our tag about this show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, She she beat this woman named Faye King. uh, (laughs) Faye King? uh And they featured a, a photo of Mildred in the paper of her posing in a wrestling pose. And the caption was, she treats them rough. Wow. And they wrote in the paper, they wrote... Uh, they wrote, uh, Adolf Hitler once ran her picture as propaganda to show how brutal Americans are. <laughs> but pretty Miss Mildred Burke, 24, world champion wrestler in the lightweight division, is McCall- is in McCallum to wrestle at the 15th Street Arena that Tuesday. Just grins delightedly all about it. And she's, so she's only 24? He was 24 about this time. That was in, uh, 39. Jesus, wow. She's, uh, on top of the wrestling world. Yeah. Uh, so, and eventually she, she, she was driving all over the place, but eventually by herself. At one point, Billy's son was driving her around and they had, uh, they kind of, they fell in love. Oh, get the fuck out of here. This is what, before he hit her and Billy's son went to Billy and he said, I, I, I'm in love with Mildred. I want to get married. And Billy just beat the ever-loving shit out of him. It's yeah. usually the answer in yeah. this tale. Yeah. That, it solves a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you're alone in and front he, of people. He tortured him so badly that he was able to turn his own son, who loved this woman, against the woman he loved, to the point where they were eventually beating her up outside of a liquor store themselves. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. You're not gonna fall in love with that broad. This is this is an example of oppressive patriarchy on both genders. Yeah, I think um I think the patriarch uh, of this family is beating the man and the woman. Right. And and brainwashing. Yes. This is fucked up. So you're saying that men suffer more. Is- no, I'm saying <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying <laughs> me, <laughs> men cause the suffering. They do. They do. And of I think everyone. I think there's I think there's well I'm not going to say it now because of I want Matt. I want Matt too. But I'm gonna this get... guy beat his son out of love. <laughs> well, he what, beat what, his son out of he love. He literally beat the love out of his son. He beat the love out of his son. <laughs> beat the ever loving shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Still man. love her? Yeah. Ah! 
No. Jeez. And so Billy was trying everything to unseat her because he, because she was slowly slipping out of his grasp. She was booking her own uh, matches, and he he did he would he was trying to find the next woman to beat her. He <laughs> at one at one point he killed her dog to stop her. Are you kidding me? Nope. She w- he, he would tell people that she had cancer so they wouldn't book her. You might catch it. And and he would he would uh, if there was a, a, a but he's still getting paid, isn't he? Yeah, but he wants he wants the he wants the next woman. He he, he wants a woman he can control, and, and he's, right. he doesn't have the control over Mildred. That he, he wants a woman that his dad won't beat him for trying to fuck. No, oh, well, you're, no, this is Billy. Oh, senior. this is Billy, Billy Senior. Billy, yeah. Neither of them are good B- people. Big Billy. No, no, <laughs> big Billy. no, they're very bad. So when when she, when he, when Billy would organize working matches, he would tell the opponents to shoot, so they could beat her. Uh huh. And she still won. None of it stopped her. God, that's insane. She won over 5,000 matches in her life. Where's her kid now? I mean, not currently, but in in this story... She's, just, she still has. She it, just, like, yeah. brings him on the road? I mean, or? his last name is Wolf because when they got married, he became, like, kind of Billy's kid. But it's to, some other guy's kid? It's it's her ex, that old ex-boyfriend. And that kid ended up beating her, too. <laughs> he came out of the womb <laughs> swinging. No, he seemed, by all accounts, he seemed like an all right guy. Uh, she, so she won over 5,000 matches in her career out of, like, 5,200. Yeah. And 4,500, she said, of her matches were uh, were finished with a move that she created, or not created, but basically uh, uh, made popular, called the Alligator Clutch. Really? And the various descriptions of it is like, it, it, everybody's trying to talk about how you're making a pretzel of each other, but in reality, of all the, all the videos I've seen, what you do is you roll around with someone and you take their legs, and you basically, they're on their back, and you take their legs and squash them onto their face. Basically oh, forming an alligator's mouth yes. out of their back and their legs. That's pretty good stuff, though. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was her big move, and that's how she ended the 4,500 4, matches. doesn't sound at all easy to do no. in a real no. fight, no. especially. Especially not a real no, fight. No, folding somebody in half. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're going to have to bear with me here. All right. Re- <laughs> just relax. Just, <laughs> yeah, just relax your spine. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just relax your bones. So you're <laughs> Please stop hurting me. An alligator clutch sounds like a nice handbag. <laughs> and so uh, by the by the early 40s, she's world famous now. She was voted in the 40s. She was voted as one of the best dressed women in the world. What with her fifty thousand dollar robe? With her fifty, well, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, uh, Does she have clothes under those jewels. Like yeah, she gives, she gives her shorts away and mops guys, <laughs> mops the floor with guys. <laughs> yeah. When she when she went to Cuba, she arrived in Havana. They played Hail to the Chief when she arrived. No, guys, we should become wrestlers, dude. This sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, podcasting. Yeah, yeah. I want to get my teeth knocked out. <laughs> And, and, your face and beat up. by your lover and his son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have them kill your dog. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But she, so she never, she, she kept wrestling, uh, and through the forties, uh, slowly, slowly getting away from Billy to the point where, in the fifty, the early fifties, she was able to divorce Billy, and she, she took all those jewels. She wanted to make some money. She traded them in. Fake. They were weren't weren't worth anything. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, just you know, Billy. Billy. Fucking Billy, man. Fucking Billy Wolf, man. Bad dude. Mm. And so nothing crazy. Nothing too crazy happened. You know, she just never lost. She she held on to her title until uh, until uh, about fifty two or so. And uh. She retired in uh, 1955, undefeated women's world wrestling champion. And any woman who said they beat her, she would threaten them and would take them to court. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Because she said, no, if, no one fucking beat me. And if you beat me, then you're a liar. <laughs> if you beat me, then you're Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Or his son. <laughs> She had over 6,000 matches over her 21-year career. 6,000! She made over $4 million. No! Just wrestling. What do you mean, just wrestling? What, does she have, like, a side pottery thing? Well, (laughs) after she retired, she became the preeminent uh, uh, promoter of women wrestling, and she became the preeminent trainer of female wrestlers. Yay! She, after she, after she retired, she ended up training over 2,000 female wrestlers, she ran her own wrestling 
uh, business selling mail order wrestling tapes, making over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. And uh, she died of a stroke in nineteen eighty eight at seventy three. But hey. she also outlived Billy Wolf and his son by twenty years. Fuck wow. yeah! They both died about five years after she divorced him. Really? That's right. Her son was a her, his son was a complete alcoholic by the end of it. And they were both broken men. Wow. And uh, Mildred beat them both. Yeah. God bless her. <sighs> Strong woman. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you know, part of her legacy is that uh, she was a. Ba- she she brought female wrestling into the mainstream, and one of the things she did was was through her work after she retired is by sending all these tapes to Japan. She got uh, j- women's wrestling. Basic. She is the godfather of women's wrestling in Japan mm-hmm. because of this, and also she trained so many female wrestlers. Her and Billy, and you know, obviously not great for those some of those female wrestlers, but uh, you know, some of the people are like the the fabulous Mula mm-hmm. was one of the people that came up through Billy and, and Mildred, right? Which obviously isn't uh, can't always be good for them. But the Mula then became you know the biggest female wrestler in history after that, right? And she, uh, unlike Mildred, did kind of replicate the abusive behavior of Billy. And that was like, you know, it led to her um, kind of pimping girls out, Mm -hmm. taking all their money, uh, you know, uh, putting them in positions where it seemed like almost a setup rape. Mm -hmm. Like you're basically, I'm going to send this girl over there and you're going to rape her. And stuff like that, you know, and it was, it was like, um, it was like the, you know, the abused becoming the abuser and um, just replicating horrible behavior. She put them into situations where they would be, ra- like, if, would be raped. And, and you beat this guy. And, and not only that, but, but um, be a bit of a Billy on the money end too. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's just that, but that happens. You learn, you know that, what you know. Yeah, that happens so often where it's like, you know, once... Once you have the power, you act like the powerful act. But I, uh, honestly, we have to look at it as a thing of saying, of course she was. Yes. Right. I sure. mean, and, and, sure. you ex- but, and it doesn't make it okay at all, of course. Right. But we, it also doesn't make okay what happened to her. Like no, no, no. Yeah. And and, it, and we do have to understand that that you know, I mean, can you imagine how crushed your spirit is? Yeah. I mean, how could you believe in anything uh being possibly good? Yeah. And how could you not believe that um everything is shit? Yeah. And everything is always going to be shit and you just need to learn. Yeah. You know, in a very Carl Panzram way. Yeah. It's like this is the way it is. Yep. I'm t- telling you, life is garbage and it's always been garbage it's and it happened always- to me and it's going to happen to you and you just need to learn it. This is why I am shocked. Michael Jackson wasn't more of a weirdo, creep, maniac. Yeah. Mm. Because of the shit that that little kid went through. Right. I'm not, not to take away from Mildred Burke, but just to bring that up. Right. You understand why she became the way, the way she was. It happened to her. Yeah, well, it's one of those things where, you know, um, you know, my old boss used to say, he's like, I think when people come out of, like, abusive situations, it, like, either destroys them or molds them into the strongest person in the world. And of it, And it's going to go one way or the other, pretty right, much. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, you have, you know, the, the, there's the kind of the tale of the kid who, you know, I saw my... My dad beat my mom and and all that. I mean, I'll never hit a woman in my life. That kind of yeah, guy. And yeah. you have the kids that go and they fucking do the same thing. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Ugh. But it's um, it's that's that's a great story though. That's a crazy story. I didn't know what the patriarchy was before this. <laughs> well, we're, you're learning way more than all of us. Yeah, here, my yeah. mind's blown, guys. <laughs> I'm raping women out here. You already. Jesus. Jesus. They're killing dogs. Now that's unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, human violence is perfectly acceptable. Isn't that weird how uh, you could talk about mass yeah, murders yeah. and stuff and they kick the dog off a cliff. Oh, <gasps> the dog? Oh, the dog? I know, I know. Yeah, it's like fucking, you know, Bambi. It's like, 
Fuck, fuck do you care? Fuck was, ba- Bambi was why, a boy. Fuck him. But like, why, 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 why is everybody so upset by like you know animal violence in cartoons? Yeah, you know how animals die in the wilderness <laughs> by disease or getting eaten alive. <laughs> the best thing that could have happened to Bambi's mom was that hunter's bullet. <laughs> That's that's Bambi brought to you by Aaron Pita. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron. <laughs> He's a high functioning pervert reviews movies. <laughs> this is the good part. <laughs> Where did she get shot? <laughs> She's put out of the misery of being. <laughs> now she can never be abused by a man. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking psycho. Uh, uh, I, I, actually, there's a phrase here from the Frank DeFord, uh, uh, one of those the parts I was reading. The phrase, free, white, and 21. Have you ever heard that phrase? <laughs> yeah, oh. I think it's one of the porno yeah, titles yeah, from Porno yeah, Samurai yeah, Killer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> free. Free, white, and 21? No, what is that? <laughs> that was a big phrase in like the 20s and 30s for like adolescents who were like, I don't need mom and dad. I'm free, white, and 20. <laughs> oh, oh my God. That is Charlottesville. Yeah. Uh, it was, yes, it was a noted, uh, obviously, it's a racist term, but for all, like, it was a very popular term back then to meaning like, they're not just kids anymore. We're free, white, and 21. <laughs> right. Wow. That, yeah. it, you know, it makes total sense. It's not shocking. No. No, judges like judges would tell you they're old enough for that. They're free to And then it was in movies. It was in... Yeah. And then it was changed to the very politically correct young, dumb, and full of cops. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Mom, what do you mean I can't go to the sock hub? I'm young, dumb, and full of cum. I thought you were free, white, and 21. Mom, that was last year. <laughs> That's racist, Mom. <laughs> Anybody can be full I'm, of cum, Mom. We're not having nymphomaniacs. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of our backgrounds, <laughs> the only thing that's white that matters is not. <laughs> oh, folks! Yeah, oh, it's always good to have a happy folks, note. <laughs> you know, you learn a lot. A you learn note. a lot on this show. You know, you, you give do. a shout out to your aunt. Yep, and, and, uh, and you and you and you promptly play a video of a young woman getting urinated uh, on. Yeah, by yeah. in a Friends? parking lot. I mean, yeah. he kissed her at the end. Yeah, so uh, we went through a lot this episode. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, I'm a little freaked Oof. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not afraid to go into the parking lot. Um, <laughs> hey, watch I'm out. gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna say that's 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 about it. That's <laughs> yeah, about that's enough. A good uh, place to uh, my name is John Fahey. Yeah. I'm Aaron Pita. I'm Matt Russo. Good night. And good luck. <laughs>